Hello everyone, this video will cover parking. So you've passed your test, you've bought your car, you're out with your friends, and as you're about to park, you look up and you see this sign. At first glance, they can look very confusing, but believe me, by the end of this video, you will understand how to read these signs and you'll be dodging those parking tickets like a pro. First off, let's just start with some basics. You will typically see this sign on directionals showing you where the nearest parking is. Ordinarily, you shouldn't be parking on the pavement, but when you see these two signs, it means that you can. The first sign indicates that you can park partially on the pavement, and the second sign indicates that you can park wholly on the pavement. These next two signs indicate that the parking dispensation has ended, so you can't park on the pavement beyond this sign. If there is a time below this sign, it means that the rule is applicable within those hours, also known as enforceable hours. So in this case, you can park on the pavement between 6 p.m. and 8 a.m. Outside of these hours, you cannot park on the pavement. This is a very simple sign. The best way to understand these signs is to break them up into sections. So over here is the rule and below it is the time in which this rule is applicable. This is the enforceable hours. Outside of these hours, this rule doesn't stand. In this case, this road is a resident parking permit holders only on Monday to Saturday during the hours of 8am and 6pm. If you wish to park on this road and you don't have a permit for this road, you can only park after 6pm and before 8am. You can also park on Sundays as this is not within the enforceable hours. Let's look at another sign. On this sign, the rule is at the bottom and the enforceable hours is over here at the top. The rule is that you can park there for 20 minutes and you cannot return within 40 minutes. And this rule is applicable on Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. After these hours, the rule is no longer applicable. Now, ticket wardens who take the job really seriously will note down the registration of your car and then come back some time later to check if you are still there. So this is something to take into consideration when you are parking. Okay, let's look at a final example. This one looks a little bit intimidating at first, but trust me, it's not really that hard. You've got to break them up into separate pieces of information and look at them as such. The days in which these rules are applicable is Monday to Saturday. This date governs the whole sign. In this first section, the rule is permit holders only and the hours is 7 to 8 a.m. So you can park here as long as you like outside of these hours, as long as it doesn't contradict the other rules in the sign. In this next section, the rule is that you must be a permit holder. And if you're not, you can park there for 20 minutes, but you can't return within 40 minutes. And you can do this between the hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Outside of these hours, as long as it doesn't contradict any of the other rules, you can park as long as you like. In the last part of this sign, the rule is permit holders only between the hours of 7 to 9 p.m. So you must be a permit holder within those hours. After these hours, you can park there again as long as you like, as long as it doesn't contradict the previous rules. Just a quick tip for you guys. These rules often govern parking bays. Outside of the enforceable hours, you can park in those bays, but you can also park on a single yellow line. Not a double yellow line, a single yellow line. And lastly, when you see a sign like this and it has no days and no time, it means that this rule is enforceable 24 seven. So you can't park here unless you've got a permit. And remember, if you break the rules of the signs, you will catch a ticket. You will catch a hot ticket. Sometimes these signs have an image. This represents the type of vehicle they are addressing. So the vehicle that is actually allowed to park there. If it has no image like most, then it's addressing everyone. Some bays will feature this sign, disabled badge holders only. If it doesn't have a time or a day, it's enforceable 24 seven. So you must have a badge displayed in your car. If you don't have one, you can't park there. In addition to following the rules of parking signs, if you don't want tickets, here are some places to avoid parking. The first is by a dropped curb. The second is beyond the lines of a parking bay or parking box. The third is parking on yellow lines, whether that be single yellow lines or double yellow lines outside of their acquired rule. 
The fourth one is parking on red lines. You can never actually park on a red line. The fifth one is parking in a disabled bay or a bay that you're not supposed to be in. And the last one I've got here is parking in a suspended parking zone. There is a full list and I will link it in the description box below. So be sure to have a little bit of a read. I quickly want to touch on congestion charges. Cities such as London and Durham have them. If you cross through these congestion zones, you're expected to pay a daily fee. London also has a dart charge. It's a charge for Dartford Bridge and you are expected to pay per crossing. So remember to always pay online. I might as well mention the low emission charge or the ULES charge, whatever you want to call it. If your car doesn't meet the requirements, you would be expected to pay an additional amount by crossing these zones. So make sure your car either meets the expectation or you pay online. Private land often have their own style of parking signs. Here, you can see that their parking signs look different, but the information actually is quite clear, well, most of the time. This first sign is letting you know that you can stay for a maximum of two hours. This next sign allows their customers to stay for a maximum of three hours. Typically, it's the number of hours you can stay that you really wanna be looking at. This last sign looks a little similar to the council signs that we've been looking at. Depending on the time you arrived, you would have to pay a fee and display the ticket on your car. Private parking are usually camera operated, so they catch your license plate when you enter the zone and your license plate when you exit. Some places still do have ticket wardens that go around and give you a ticket if you've overstayed or you've parked incorrectly. If you do get a ticket whilst on private land or by the council, you can choose to pay it or contest it. I'm going to leave a really helpful link in the description box below that kind of talks through the processes and gives you more information about your rights. Let's do some test questions. I'm going to show you some images. Feel free to pause the video and then I'll come back and give you the answer. The answer for number one is that between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6.30 p.m., Mondays through to Friday, you can only park here if you have a permit. Let's say you arrived at this location on Sunday at 1 p.m., you would be able to park here without a permit because it's outside of the enforceable hours. The answer for number two is you can only park here between 8 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays if you have a permit. And if you don't have a permit, you must pay at the machine and you must display a ticket. You can only park for a maximum of four hours. Again, outside of these enforceable hours, you can park freely. For the final three questions, I want you guys to assume you reach these locations on Saturday at 6.15 p.m. And I want you to answer the question, can you park here without a permit? Feel free to pause the video and I'll come back with the answer. So the answer to question three is no, it's a red route. So you can't even stop there unless you're loading within the appropriate hours or you're parking there after the enforceable hours. The answer to question four is also no. So even though it says 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the top section of the sign, at the bottom it says at other hours and Sunday permit holders only, which means that you can't park here unless you have a permit. And the answer to number five is yes. The enforceable hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And since you reached it at 6.15, you're all good to park without paying a penny. And that's it, folks. We are all done. I really hope you found this useful. Don't forget to check out my other videos in my driving series. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, drive safe.